right. We're recording. Go for it. Yeah, great. Thanks. So uh, just to give some some um, uh, concrete pointers at what what it what it looks like. Um, so. So the goal uh, is uh, to show why and how you should use uh, uh, GitHub action. So the why is already covered uh, in, in uh, by Lee. Um, and then the how remains. So uh, I'll give a bit of background on, on actions. I'll show a couple of basic components of an action, some real life examples, and finally a quick recap to, uh, to check what we've learned. So GitHub actions um, are used to automate several software development tasks. So this is this is no, not different than uh, most other tools that do stuff like this, like Travis or uh, CircleCI. So uh, for example, check dependencies, updating versions, verify pull requests, uh, run functional tests as well to see if, if uh, particular test data give the right output. Part of uh, continuous integration. So um, continuous integration often referred to as CI is a software development approach where you incorporate very small changes in your uh, code base very often. So uh, sometimes multiple times a day. Um, and to, uh, to allow this, this integration also needs some kind of automatic checks so that all your small changes don't break anything in between and you, don't, and you have to go back to uh, what caused this. So there are already uh, a lot of uh, software solutions like CircleCI, CI, uh, Jenkins, uh, that do stuff like this. And now GitHub Actions is the new kid on the block. So why did we choose GitHub Actions specifically uh, for this? Uh, for open source repositories on GitHub, it's completely free. Uh, so that's, that's a huge uh, bonus. Uh, if you have uh, private repositories, you have a, uh, a budget that's free per year. And then uh, if you go over that budget, you have to pay. Uh, but if, if you're working on open source, uh, project is uh, completely free, limitless. Um, another nice thing is that uh, there are a lot of pre-made actions already available on GitHub Marketplace. So I'll show that in a minute. And it has great integration with uh, GitHub, uh, of course. So uh, this is a tweet that I ran into some time ago. And uh, just to illustrate how, um, how common automation already is. So this is uh, somebody found this. I don't remember which tool, but it's uh, a bot found a, a vulnerability uh, somewhere in a, in a GitHub, uh, then sent a, a pull request to fix it. Then the, the CI bot verified it, another bot merged it, and uh, to top it off, a bot celebrated it uh, with a GIF at the end. Um, I'm not saying that we should all uh, aim to do this at the end of this uh, hackathon, but it's uh, interesting to see that this kind of stuff is already happening. So before we go into depth about uh, GitHub Actions itself, uh, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, YAML. I, I always pronounce the I don't know if that's the right uh, pronunciation. Uh, so uh, the Wikipedia entry for this uh, format is also pretty pretty good. Uh, so if you have any doubts, uh, check there. So it's an easy format to uh, declare lists and dictionaries, and it's used a lot for configuration files. So probably you've seen the YAML file uh, uh, already. So you can. Um, and define lists in uh, two different ways. So the standard way is just a, a dash and space and then the items uh, and then uh, each on the new line. You can also do it, uh, which looks more like the, the Python way of declaring a list. It's called the inline format. And you have the same thing for a dictionary where you have a key, in this case name, uh, and the value that is uh, assigned to that key. So in this case, it's, uh, the value is BOAS. And you can also do that in an inline format. So, um, and then YAML also has a, some other uh, components. Yeah, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. So as you mentioned, combinations are possible. So you can have a dictionary with dictionaries in it, and then one of the dictionary values can be a list. 
So you can get quite complex patterns like this. If you look at it, it's not that uh, complex, but if you have to put it into words, it's uh, quite quite a bit already. Um, and the nice thing about YAML is that it is pretty human readable. So um, multiple, uh, you can uh, use multiple lines in a uh, YAML file that can be interpreted together. So you can choose to uh, this run uh, command is used a lot in, in GitHub Actions as we'll see later. And you can uh, choose to preserve new lines or you can uh, fold new lines to spaces. So uh, the two um, code blocks show the exact same commands, um, but in different formats. So I think for GitHub Actions, uh, we'll probably use the, the left one most. Uh, and it's useful to include a couple of commands after each other, uh, which will be pretty uh, pretty handy later on. So that that's that's basically why this pipe symbol is needed. So then we get to the GitHub Actions itself. So it basically consists of uh, three sections. So uh, you have to name uh, the action. Uh, that's of course the name uh, uh, section, then uh, the action should be triggered on certain events. And that's defined by the uh, section that starts with on. And then the actions itself are contained in the job section and each job consists of one or more steps. So uh, yeah, that, that's where the example uh, comes in. So if you have a second screen, you can open that uh, to, to scroll along. I'll also have it on the on the slides itself, so it's not uh, necessary. Oh, by the way, I, I can't see any uh, comments now or, or in the chat. So if there's something uh, missing or you, you have a question, please just interrupt me. So the name and the on section. So uh, for a basic example, you could have uh, the action name is Proca. And that's also what will be shown in the on the GitHub uh, interface when you uh, go to your repository. Uh, and uh, the event to uh, on which you should activate uh, the action in this case is a pull request. So this is what it looks like in the most minimal case. So you can do it on, on push events, pull requests, releases. Uh, you can further specify uh, on specific releases. So if you want to uh, only run the action on uh, releases that are after uh, version uh, 1.0, then uh, you can specify this as well in the on section. So you can get quite complicated patterns there to exactly uh, specify when you want to uh, run this action. So you can uh, you can also specify the branches on which you want to uh, run this. So uh, you can say, for example, if uh, there's a push to the main branch, I want to activate it. You can say, I want to activate when there's a pull request to the main or the dev branches. Or for example, for releases, you can say, uh, I want uh, that this action only runs when a new release is created. You can include other keywords here as well. So there's quite extensive uh, documentation available uh, online, which you can, uh, which you can uh, check out. Um, in this hackathon, the most standard section, uh, the most standard on section that we will use activates on pushes and pull requests to the main and dev branches. So that's what you'll see in most uh, or at least in the three examples that we've included. Um, yeah. So then uh, we've covered the name section, the on section, and then there's of course the job section where the uh, action is actually contained. So you can specify multiple jobs within an action. And if you, uh, for in this example, we specified three different jobs. So uh, build, test, and any name. Uh, and these will be run in parallel. Uh, that's that's the default. You can also uh, specify if you want to run one job uh, that is dependent on another job. Uh, but by default, these uh, these run in parallel. And the examples on the on the CSIS uh, GitHub uh, all 
uh, all actions only contain a single job, but then that job can consist of multiple steps to make it uh, uh, simple. So the steps are then executed in sequence. That's, uh, I'll show that in a minute. So a minimal job um, contains a runs on section and uh, one or multiple steps. So the runs on is very important because it describes the operating system on which the action will run. So there are, there are a couple of um, servers that are hosted by GitHub that, uh, that have uh, these operating systems. So you can uh, run on uh, Ubuntu, on uh, Mac OS and on uh, Windows. And you can specify which versions you want to run on for uh, Ubuntu and Mac OS. Um, and you can, yeah, so one, one thing to keep in mind that uh, Ubuntu latest is not really the latest Ubuntu version. It's uh, currently 18, uh, Ubuntu 18 that they're uh, supporting in that sense. Um, yeah, so this is useful if you want to test across different operating systems, which uh, is very, uh, uh, which might be necessary for a couple of tools. So if we want to put this into an action, uh, you have a, um, a, one, a single job that's called first job. It runs on uh, the latest Ubuntu version, which is 18. And it consists of two steps, which are foo and bar. And uh, then the run uh, keyword describes which commands should be run in the, in the action. So, um, Another example, if we want to have two steps, you can uh, have a download step, which runs uh, git clone. Uh, yeah, so for git clone, there's an, there's an easier trick I'll show later, but this is to, to give an example. So you download the repository and enter it first. Uh, then you have a step that's called test, where you check a couple of the, the basic tests that uh, Lee described uh, in his presentation. So you check if it's uh, in your path, uh, if the version and help uh, switches work, uh, and if there's a test uh, command, for example. So this is what, uh, what two different steps would look like. So if you put all this together, you have an action that has a name. Uh, you have an action that activates on uh, events that you've uh, specified. So in this case, on every push and pull request to the main and dev branches. The uh, jobs will be run on Ubuntu and the uh, action downloads some code and runs basic test. But there are many more possibilities, so uh, you can uh, specify a lot of these different steps. Uh, and the nice thing about actions as well is that there uh, is a thing called GitHub Marketplace. I didn't know this actually before I uh, looked into GitHub Actions. And there are a lot of pre-made apps and actions to automate things. So uh, a couple of apps that are available are Travis CI or Dependabot code call, which I've seen on a couple of repositories. Uh, but for GitHub Actions specifically, there are over 6,000 uh, community actions available. So these are GitHub Actions that are created by uh, other people and which can, which can be used in your own GitHub Actions. So these uh, are usually a single step within your workflow and they can be activated by using the keyword uh, uses. And then uh, actions is uh, where, uh, where it can find uh, this, this community action and checkout is the name of the community action. V2 indicates that it's, uh, the, that it's version two. So an example uh, is a checkout. I think this is the most uh, common uh, community action to use. So it checks out the GitHub repository. So you don't have to do Git clone. Uh, if you use checkout, uh, for example, in this uh, example, so you use uh, the checkout uh, action, uh, the repository you want to check out is uh, Proca, and you want to uh, uh, clone this uh, repository into a directory called Proca. So uh, in the end, you will have a, a directory under uh, the GitHub workspace called Proca, which contains the entire uh, GitHub repository. And there are also the nice thing about this is that there are uh, additional uh, things you can you can specify. This is an easy way to make sure that you uh, check it out in a good way. 
uh, yeah, so it checks out POCA into uh, under GitHub workspace and then directory POCA. So uh, then uh, comes the real life example that I've uh, posted in the chat at the start of this talk. So this is uh, also in the uh, CSIS uh, repository. So we start very basically with uh, the name of the action, which is of course PROCA. Uh, there are, uh, uh, it activates on push and pull requests on the main and dev branches. So that's all uh, pretty standard. And then uh, we start with the jobs. So there's a job that's called build, which runs on uh, Ubuntu. And this job consists of several steps, which I'll show now. So the first step is named uh, apt. And this installs a couple of uh, dependencies that are needed if you want to um, install Poca from uh, source. Uh, so this, uh, yeah. Uh, then we'll check out the uh, repository using the community action uh, checkout. Uh, so this will uh, check out into the PROCA directory. Using uh, tree, uh, we can get a directory structure so we can look what the, what the GitHub workspace uh, uh, looks like. Uh, so that's, that's usually for troubleshooting quite, uh, quite handy. But if, if it works, you can exclude this, of course. And we will check uh, what the bin directory of uh, POCA looks like. So just to see what kind of uh, executables are there and uh, whether we can execute them and if they're all uh, there um, and if we can find them. So this is all check it, installing dependencies, checking uh, whether it's, it's uh, downloaded correctly. Then uh, path uh, needs to be fixed because you're so so basically this starts on on a completely fresh virtual machine so you need to take care of all this uh, small stuff as well which can be uh, quite annoying to find out in the first place so that's it usually involves some trial and error that's at least what we uh, what we found uh, making the examples for Poca and Quast uh, so you you need to fix path yourself of course. Uh, then you can check whether the executables are in path. So uh, POCA and uh, a dependency of POCA. And then uh, you can check, uh, for example, whether the POCA flags are working correctly. So the version and help flags. Um, and you can do a small functional test. So you can uh, annotate a, a very small plasmid FASTA file and see if uh, anything ends up in the output. So this is basically what a what a POCA GitHub action looks like. So it's a lot of um, uh, a lot of fixing small stuff, which involves trial and error, and then in the end you can do the the functional test that you are most interested in. Um, so we also have an example for Quast. So this involves uh, another very nice uh, feature of uh, GitHub actions. Uh, so it's uh, basically the starting section is the same and there's a, a build job that runs on Ubuntu but then there's another uh, uh, an additional uh, keyword which is strategy and then matrix and then you can give a uh, you can assign a list of uh, Python versions to this uh, in this uh, in this dictionary and uh, what you can do with this is that um, you can set up uh, different versions of Python to test your tool on. So um, first you check out uh, the repository of Quast using uh, checkout, and then you set up a, uh, a uh, Python version, which is defined by, uh, by, uh, which is defined by, this, by this matrix uh, first. And it installs Python and make sure that it's installed correctly so you can uh, use that to uh, install your tool with. So uh, you run different steps for every Python version and you can see whether, uh, whether all your tests uh, pass for every version, which is very uh, useful if you want to test a lot of configurations uh, together. 
so this is this is the rest of, rest of the example. You install we uh, yeah I installed pre to check uh, the directory structure again. Uh, checked out uh, the Quast uh, repository. Uh, install Quast using their uh, setup file, and that this already uses all these different uh, Python uh, versions. I finally uh, download some um, some test data. Um, check whether Quast is in the uh, in the path and uh, run the test that they have already included. So um, this is a very quick introduction uh, of why these actions are useful and what a minimal uh, GitHub Actions YAML looks like. Two real life examples where you can see uh, uh, what the, the a bit of the, the nitty gritty uh, looks like and uh, some, some extra functionalities for GitHub Actions. For example, uh, running this over a matrix of different Python versions. Uh, this is also, for example, possible uh, across different operating systems if you're interested in that. Um, but there's much more uh, possible with the uh, community actions, of course. So that's a crash course into uh, GitHub actions. Next up is uh, forming the teams, starting some project ideas. Uh, Lee already put up the Discord, but I think everyone in this Zoom call is also on the Discord. Um, yeah, so are there any questions now on this, um, on GitHub Actions or how to do stuff? So this might be a bit of a stupid question, um, but so I, I, I think I kind of get the syntax and stuff like that. I've used a little bit of YAML before. How, how do you actually run the, that YAML? So is it just something that lives on your GitHub repo and then it gets run automatically if it's in the .github directory or do you have to do something to run it? Um, so, um, so like when you do the on thing, does that just, if there's uh -huh. any sort of thing, it like runs that like on pull request or on whatever? Yeah, I think it, it needs to be activated some way. I think, Lee, did you? Um, uh, no, so it's a, um, it's, a, it's a good question. So uh, it's... Um, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was obvious and I was like missing something or no, if it's it a was great, just... Okay. It's a great <laughs> question. There's no okay. chuck mark that says run it. There's no like button on GitHub. It's actually kind of magical. Like it will um, it will run the actions as soon as you commit and push it. And okay. then after you push it, you'll go. Um, there's an actions tab now on GitHub. They kind of stealthily put it in there. There's an actions tab on any GitHub repo now, and you can just click on it and and see the thing run. It it runs within a, like a few seconds of you uploading it, of, of pushing it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and um, I think that also your question is is a really good one too because this is a big hackathon and Boas showed us basically like ten or twenty lines of code and you might be saying like is that it? And yes, it is. There, there <laughs> okay. isn't a lot of coding. It's actually quite straightforward. But uh, Boas also mentioned that there's a lot of trial and error, and that's kind of where the tough part comes in. Okay. Uh, Peter also asked a question, Boas. I don't know if um, you know the answer off the top of your head. Um, how many CPUs uh, do we have, or or really like what are the? Sorry, your question actually was what are the resource limits that we have, and I'm I'm trying to find it online also right now. Oh, that's uh, something I don't know by heart, but I so. The amount of hours that you can run is uh, is is a lot, uh, and I think one job or like one one action running one action is limited to uh, actually quite long running a day or something. I think or quite the the action themselves can take can take a long time. Uh, I don't know what the CPU limit is. I don't know by the top. Ah, I I did just find it. Um, sorry for talking over you. I, uh, it's a it's a two core CPU, seven gigabyte RAM memory, fourteen gigabytes of SSD disk space. 
And also on the link I sent um, is a complete listing of the different operating systems that you also mentioned. Sorry, and then, you know, I can see there's all this on this to this, but do you have like, um, how do you manually, manually run something? You know, if you want to just test if your thing works. I haven't found a way. So, um, <laughs> Uh, that, that's the short answer. The long answer is um, what I've done in the past is um, I've made even like a separate repo to test things out or um, even easier is I've made a separate branch. So um, what, I've, what I've commonly done is I've made like a unit testing branch on my repo, test, 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 and it's like 50 iterations to finally get it exactly right. And mm -hmm. then I'll make a pull request with myself and it squashes so the all of those commits. The basic way to do it is to fork maybe even your own stuff, um, and then um, yeah. and then um, you can have like as many branches, and that's basically how you drive it. And then the other thing that I was wondering is, so if we're all like working, so we're all doing pull requests and things, is there some kind of a queue? You can only have a certain number of actions running at a time. I don't know if I've come across a limit. Um, have you, Boaz? Um, no, but we have not. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, so we've done it for PROC and CROSS now, which is not, like, uh, super a lot. Uh, but I thought the limits are quite uh, high, actually. So, um, I should... Mm. I found it yet again while you were talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> nice. Okay, I'm just, I'm just buying us time, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll paste this in here again. There's a, in the text, um, for the free plan, which is what everyone has here. Basically, um, you can have a total of 20 concurrent jobs. So I think that okay. will be just fine for us. Um, for uh, Mac OS, apparently you only have five. So if you want to test for Mac OS, that's not wrong, but, um, we might be a little bit limited on that. Okay. Good. So is, was that kind of your question? Yeah, exactly. So I was thinking like if we basically did, uh, uh, you know, if four of us did pull requests at the same time and it fired off the respective actions that we're contributing, you know, would we hit a limit? And it doesn't sound like we'd easily hit a limit given the size of how we are. But at the same time, if we put all of bioinformatics into one repo, we probably will hit a limit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are ways to stack it and... Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Like, for example, we can have 20 concurrent jobs, but um, there's a little bullet point here saying that a job matrix can generate a maximum of 256 jobs per workflow run. So I, I think we can kind of hack it. Yeah. yeah. And that was a pun. I think uh, Paul also asked in the, in the chat if there's there aren't any differences between uh, Jenkins CI and Circle CI and the others uh, that I've mentioned. Um, I, I, to be honest, I don't know. I've not worked with uh, Jenkins CI. I've only seen Circle CI on uh, Biocomba, um, and I've used GitHub Actions now. So uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm able to answer that question now. The nice, the nice thing about uh, GitHub Actions is that it's uh, that it's free and the limits are pretty hi uh, so that that made a good use case for our uh, hackathon now we thought yeah the, i think the biggest um issue the biggest difference is just some ten, syntax like they all basically use yaml but you have different ways to do it and you have to configure it this way or that way yeah um i think at the beginning of this hackathon when we were planning it um it was also brought to our attention that there are things that are similar to it also like um there's a whole galaxy repo for this kind of thing. Um, and again, I mean, it just depends on what you want to test. Like, is it a galaxy tool or is it like a standalone tool or how you want to test it? Do you want to test it in GitHub Actions versus Travis versus Circle versus Jenkins? So I don't yeah, think you're yeah. wrong for going to these things. I just think that um, it was kind of a design choice to make sure that we're all on the same page to go to GitHub Actions today. Sure. No, I mean, I, I, mean, I think the galaxy stuff was Travis based because of history or something like that. GitHub mm -hmm. Actions didn't exist in those days. But um, then the other thing is that like, if you want to do something that requires credentials, 
is that like is there like kind of private place in the um github repository where you can put it so if you say let's say you want something to do something and then upload to key.io or something like that you can you put some credentials somewhere and then have them exported in an environment variable or something yes it's called github secrets <laughs> uh -huh. and you can go into the repo and go in into the settings and go into your secrets you can type in a variable name in the variable value and save it and it will never ever reveal it to you again you will never see it again so you'll have to remember it um and even if you print it out into github actions like into an echo statement it will actually mask it, it will do the best it can to to know what the variable is and to mask it so it will do its best to hide it but um it, it's not foolproof but um but yes, you can make basically uh, credentials. You can make a username and password and put it into GitHub secrets and it will maintain that for you. And, um, and I used that uh, when I was doing uh, Docker Hub stuff, I had to put in my username and password. Okay, so I think that's it for now. Uh, yeah, I think it's team to of it's time to form teams. At this point, uh, I've already seen on the uh, on the GitHub that there have been uh, people have already formed some teams. So there's already a Chewbacca team consisting of the Portuguese uh, delegation. Um, there have been two other teams that have started. Uh, so that's very nice. Um, so how how do we want to do this, Lee? Yeah. Um, so I'll um, I'll I'll stop recording since it sounds like Q and A is over. Oh yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 And. Um,